So, so mucopolysaccharidoses, um, there are several types, and MPS1 is also known as Hurler, Hurler Shea, or Shea. And the reason for the different names is be prior to the discovery of the gene that was involved, um, it was distinguished by whether or not there was developmental or cognitive delay associated with it. So now we talk about more severe forms of Hurler, uh, and then the milder forms, which are Shea. Uh, so it depends on whether or not there's intellectual disability associated with it. MPS1 is due to a deficiency in iduronidase uh, enzyme, uh, which leads to the accumulation of heparin sulfate, sulfate and dermatin sulfate throughout the body. And that can sometimes lead to neurocognitive uh, issues, as well as systemic issues. Uh, the diagnosis is made after you suspect it, and that's where it's difficult. In the more mild forms, patients may not have the characteristic features Patients with MPS generally are described as coarse, or have a coarse facial features, a very prominent brow, macroglossia, a large tongue, um, and a short stature, and sometimes a growth impairment. For MPS1 specifically, uh, in the more milder forms, you might miss it, but patients might present to an ear, nose, throat doctor for recurrent ear infections or have obstructive sleep apnea due to tonsillar hypertrophy or adenoidal hypertrophy. They might have sleep disturbances. So they may not present initially um, with the characteristic uh, facial features, but they will present to ENT for these frequent ear infections or hearing issues. And that should really prompt an ENT to, to look for the diagnosis. Initial diagnosis is made by sending uh, the enzyme activity level. It's hard to differentiate between MPS1, 2, and the others, so it's recommended to send all of the enzymes, the entire enzyme panel, because there can be overlap. And if there's enzyme, if the specific enzyme is deficient, then you then go for uh, DNA sequencing to confirm the mutation. So for MPS1, it's also a recessive disorder, autosomal recessive, so that requires um, two copies of the gene to be impaired or uh, mutate uh, in order to inherit it. So a pa a parent, both parents would be a, f uh, a carrier of the disorder. Currently there is uh, an FDA approved treatment for Hurler syndrome. Uh, it is with a recombinant uh, enzyme replacement therapy, giving that enzyme back weekly intravenously for over four to six hours depending on uh, the patient's ability to tolerate it. It's a lifelong commitment. Uh, these are infusions um, sometimes require the child to undergo a surgery for metaport access because their veins are difficult to, to withstand repeated infusions. Um, there's a high rate of hypersensitivity and antibody formation to the enzyme, so efficacy can be impaired and there could be uh, significant uh, reactions to these infusions. It's not ideal, but there is, um, it has been shown to be efficacious. Um, for patients who are diagnosed before the age, before the age of two years old with uh, MPS1, there is some literature that bone marrow transplantation could be helpful, um, especially in the neuronopathic form of the disease. However, there's high morbidity and mortality associated with that. Looking to the future, there's, there's new approaches to therapy on the horizon and actually for MPS1 specifically and MPS2 uh, there are trials now for gene therapy and the specific gene therapy that we're involved with here at NYU School of Medicine uh, incorporates some gene editing capability. It's uh, produced by a pharmaceutical company that is able to um, introduce the specific enzyme into a viral vector, and then that viral vector is administered one time intravenously. And the concept is that it would go and hone into the liver and infect the liver and actually edit the gene into a specific part of the genome without any potential off-target effects, thereby giving the patient a lifetime uh, enzyme infusion, being constituently active throughout the, uh, the day, every day in the hopes that we would um, almost mimic the basal rate of the, uh, the enzyme. Uh, there is some preclinical data by the pharmaceutical company that it might be able to pass the blood-brain barrier, 
and thereby treat not only the systemic effects of the disease, but also the neuronopathic or the central nervous system effects. Um, right now, our systemic enzyme therapy is not thought to cross the blood-brain barrier. So even though um, there are children with developmental issues um, related to their MPS, it's not being treated with systemic uh, enzyme replacement therapy.